rating plus one one o plus x scp one three four one during initial containment item hash scp one three four one object class euclid special containment procedures scp one three four one is to be held in a containment locker located on the grounds of site seventy seven this chamber is to have two guards monitoring it at all times. No arboreal objects are to be held in the same area as SCP-1341. Testing must be conducted in a standalone structure. SCP-1341 cannot be brought into any building other than those specifically constructed to house and test it. Description SCP-1341 is a mason jar made of red glass with the words, jungle in a jar, stenciled on the lid with black acrylic paint. When SCP-1341 is in an inactive state, it weighs approximately 480 grams. Removing the lid when SCP-1341 is outside of an enclosed space has no anomalous effect. If SCP-1341's lid is removed while it is indoors, it will begin to exude soil from the opening at 10 kg per minute. The soil will be continuously produced until all available space in the room it is contained within is filled with this soil to a depth of at least 10 mm. Once the soil has reached this depth, several anomalous species of plants will begin to grow. Plants produced by SCP-1341 superficially resemble species found in tropical rainforests. However, DNA testing has shown that these plants do not correspond to any known species. The plants will continue to grow until they have achieved the maximum size the area will allow. They take a maximum of three days to reach full maturity and once mature are resistant to temperatures of up to 500 degrees Celsius. The epidermal layer of these plants measures an average of 7, 6 on the Mohardness scale. They have been shown to be resistant to all known types of chemical defoliants. An instance of SCP-1341-2, when the maximum amount of space the plants can take up is filled, several trees will begin to grow fruits resembling fruits in the genus Durio. Two to three weeks after these fruits begin to grow, they will fall from the trees and split open, allowing several juvenile organisms, hereafter known as SCP-1341-2, to emerge. Instances of SCP-1341-2 resemble vaguely simian bipeds, and are not hostile unless provoked. Instances of SCP-1341-2 exhibit behavior patterns consistent with those of wild chimpanzees. When the population of SCP-1341-2 has reached between 20 and 30, the area affected by SCP-1341 will expand to fill the largest enclosed space possible. The root structure of the plants within SCP-1341 will spread through the walls ceiling, and floors of any artificial structure it has been placed within. New plants will begin to grow from these root structures, until SCP-1341 has completely assimilated the structure. Plus Addendum 1341-1 Experiment 1341-A Addendum 1341-1 Incident 1341-A On 20 Initial experimentation on SCP-1341 was initiated. The following document was recovered from site. After the site did not make its monthly scheduled radio contacts without post delta, the site was found to be completely covered with plant overgrowth, with all personnel stationed at the base currently listed as MIA. The following log is believed to have been compiled by Dr. Boyd former late researcher of SCP-1341. Day 01. We started the experiment on Phase 3 today. D0981 was selected because of his previous cooperation on other safe objects. We put the jar in the room we're holding him in and let it do its thing. Now, we just wait and see what happens. Day 15. We finally entered Phase 3. D0981 is behaving as expected. 
and so has the plant growth. Most of the chamber is covered in vines and overgrowth, and several of the trees have begun sprouting. Day 17. The test chamber has become impossible to enter from the main entrance, so we cut open a hole in the ceiling. Most of the test chamber feels like a jungle now. Theo 981 doesn't really talk anymore. He just walks around yanking up weeds. His hands are pretty bloody from doing it, and he seems to be running himself ragged. I'm going to recommend the use of sedatives to make sure he doesn't kill himself before we wrap this thing up. Day 18. The test chamber is impossible to enter by any means. Both of our makeshift entrances are completely overgrown. However, even though we aren't feeding Dio 981 or making him sleep, he still seems to be active. Vital signs show he is stressed but alive. Despite not having eaten anything in at least three weeks, putting in a petition to end the experiment to the director this week. Illegible. Day 20. It appears that SCP-1341's effect is beginning to spread outside the test chamber. The grounds have become completely overgrown, and anything we had growing on site is growing out of control. I am going to send some agents into the test chamber to retrieve SCP-1341 and terminate the 0981. If we don't stop this now, the whole site could be overgrown in a matter of weeks. Day 25. The agents I sent never came back. They were in radio contact for a few days though. So at least it wasn't a completely worthless endeavor. Apparently, the chamber has become even more overgrown since the last time we saw it. They reported sounds of wildlife coming from inside the chamber. The 0981 was nowhere to be found. The plant growth out here has gotten a lot worse since we sent them in. I'm afraid I will have to evacuate the base, as the continued rate of plant growth will render it inoperable within the week. Day 26. We can't leave. I woke up this morning to find that every door and window has been grown over by thick, heavy vines. None of the equipment we tried using to break through worked. People are missing. Entire sections of the base are impossible to enter. And Ernie went into the air ducts and never came back. We gathered all the resources we had. And we are going to try and find an alternate means of escape tomorrow. Also, we aren't alone. There are creatures in the foliage. They watch from the denser patches. I haven't been able to get a good look at them. But I know they're there. The reports said they weren't hostile. I hope they were right. Day 28. We accidentally killed one today. Martin was trying to access the armory, dot and I guess it startled him. We found his body just outside the armory entrance. Just completely mutilated. And the smell, there was the smell of a dead body. But not just that. There was this thick, musky odor. Nobody but Martin knew the access codes to the armory. So I guess that plan is out the window. I know they're out there still. If they didn't want to harm us before. They definitely do now. I hope God gives me the strength to protect my staff and get us out of this mess safely. Day 30. I think I might be the last one left. We tried, so hard to get out. But it got all of us. Janice fell in a pit. And it was filled with bamboo stakes. I still feel nauseous thinking of her. Albert got stuck in some vines. And we couldn't get him out. After about a day. They had grown over him completely. I can still hear him crying. Lyra, I don't know what happened to Lyra. All I know is that once the lights went out, I never saw her again. Theo 981 is alive. Sometimes he talks over the PA system. He rants and raves about how we let this happen. We let the base fall and become a pit of weeds and depravity, as he puts it. Melodramatic bastard. I know that, he knows where I am. I'm not going to play this game with him. He wants to play Hunter. But he's going to be sorely disappointed. I'm going to take myself out first. The remaining pages are blank.